Hello, my most amazing artists. Today, you're going to be using glaze to paint your ceramic pieces that have come out of the kiln. You'll notice they've gone through a physical and chemical change. They're no longer gray earthenware clay, but white fired ceramic now, almost feeling like glass. But because it could feel like glass, it can also break like glass. It's very fragile, so make sure that when you're handling it today, you're super careful. Now, this one was not something that I dropped and broke. It broke in the kiln. This might have happened, and if it happened to you, it's okay. Know that we can fuse it back together after we glaze, but this will happen after it goes back in the kiln because we can't put glue in the kiln. Now, you're going to have glaze. Glaze is a little bit different than paint because it turns all this glossy, shiny texture after it goes back in the kiln. You'll notice that they are each labeled by color. The reason I have to label them and put a color sample is because once they go in the kiln, they become brighter and shinier, almost like glass. You wanna put three coats because you'll notice that one is a little too thin. Two or three is just right. Three coats will give it that nice, glossy, glassy texture and look. I have all different colors of glaze and the lids have the color of what they look like when they come out of the kiln. You'll notice they look different when they get fired in the kiln again. A lot of them get brighter and get a lot darker sometimes. So I would be careful and make sure that when you're using red that you really are using red because it might look more like pink so you might think you're using pink but then it turns out to be a hot tamale red they all have really fun names too if you need a refill of paint or glaze i will refill those so just let me know they are very expensive so we want to make sure that you're very careful with them and not mixing them in the paint tray you're going to do three coats whenever you paint a color. You'll notice it dries very, very quickly because the clay is absorbing that paint very quick. It's going into all of the pores. So if you had texture, it's important that you push that brush down into the texture of the clay. You can paint everything except for the back of the clay. You cannot paint any of the back because any of the back that sits on the bottom of the kiln or on your table, well, this kind of paint gets heated up and it turns into glass once it cools or something like glass, not technically glass. But if you were to paint the back and it sat on the bottom of the kiln and heated up, well, it would glass or fuse to the bottom of the kiln and I would not be able to get it out without breaking it. So please make sure you're only painting on the front and not at all on the back. You can use as many colors as you want, but just know that you have to fill in all the space. Even if you want to keep something white, you have to glaze it with the white because it's going to make this surface change a lot more. That white clay chalky texture is not going to happen once you paint over top of it with the glaze. So make sure you get your brush into all of those textures and cracks. I'm using one color at a time in all of the spots that I want that color. Because I don't have water to wash my brush, I'm going to have a sponge that I can clean it off on and wipe my brush before I get a new color. But it's smart to use that color in all the places you want it on your piece before you change your color because this glaze is very expensive. I only let usually my fifth graders use the glaze because it costs about mm, 100 to 200 to 300 dollars just for one class to be able to use this glaze. Each bottle costs around 40 dollars and the whole set of colors is each around $250 or $300. So that means right here I have probably $600 worth of glaze in front of me that I am using because I have all those awesome colors to select. It's almost like going to a pottery studio where you get to pick your colors and see all those samples. I have done that same thing for you by getting as many as possible for you to choose from and getting those color samples on there. So make sure you don't mix them up. When you want to change your color, all you have to do is wipe that brush on a sponge. We can't use water on our brushes because water and glaze don't mix well. If you were to get your glaze in water, it would get all watery and not come out very good. It would not look good when it comes out of the kiln. That's why you want to make sure you do three coats. You'll notice that each coat or layer of paint dries really, really quickly because the clay is absorbing it. That'll allow you to go back and paint over it twice or even three times if you want that extra bright, nice coat that makes it thick. It's not going to look very good and you'll see all your brush strokes if you only do one. So make sure that you do two to three coats of every color. So if I wanna use this purple color, I'm going to paint it in all the places that I want it. That way I don't have to wash my brush or wipe it off and then go back to that color later. I also don't wanna waste a whole lot on the brush bristles. I wanna use as much as possible before I change my color or wipe it off on my sponge. 
If you make a mistake, it is possible to wipe off your mistake. But keep in mind, we're not going to be starting all over because you do only have today to paint these since they have to go back in the kiln to be fired. So you need to make sure you are working quickly and efficiently, painting all the spots that you need to with that color before you switch to your next one. Remember, this is an abstract African inspired mask, so it does not have to be painted like a real face. You can use a lot of different bright colors or whatever kinds of colors you want, as many or as few as you want. But I would suggest doing some different variations or variety of colors because Kimmy Cantrell used a lot of different colors in his masks. For a lot of the clay piece or the background of the face, there are some more muted tones, meaning some darker colors, more neutrals. So that's why I included some brown in there. But then for the details, I'm going to make sure I include some very bright colors too. If you remember, Kimmy Cantrell said he uses a lot of red in his colors too. He used a lot of red lips, different parts of the face, maybe even the nose, does not have to be realistic. So that's why I'm picking things that normally wouldn't be on a face, like purple eyelids, maybe a yellow nose, maybe I'll put red up on the top and on the lips too. So it's totally up to you what colors you use as long as you cover all of the white clay on the front of your piece that does not touch the table and that you do two to three coats of each color. Once you've got it all covered with two to three coats, then if it's dry enough, you can go back with a detail bottle. The detail bottle is going to allow you to put on some extra details. I have every color of glaze in these little detail bottles. All you have to do is take off the lid and squeeze to make different patterns and designs. Just make sure you're not squeezing too much and going crazy. Now with the detail bottles, you do not have to do two to three coats because it's already coming out and squeezing out thick enough and you have the glaze underneath it. So if you're layering the glazes, you don't have to do two to three coats each. Just the base coat has to be that. So if you wanted to do some little design, do it after. I also would work from your lightest colors to your darkest colors. If you start out with a dark color and go over top of it with a light color, you're going to see that dark color shining through underneath it. So definitely start with your light colors first. So if you had a yellow, make sure that you don't start with a dark color underneath it if you wanted that yellow on top. You can layer the colors as long as they mix well together and as long as you're not mixing in the paint tray, only on your ceramic piece. It does look a lot brighter if you keep the colors just how they are though. So I'm only going to layer when I add my detailer bottle. When you're all done, you're going to carefully pick it up and make sure you have not painted on the back at all. If you accidentally got any glaze on the back, you're going to carefully wipe it off with a sponge. When you're all done, it'll go back on the tray and then I can't wait to put it back in the kiln and see how these come out. Make sure your brushes are cleaned up and your sponges and your lids are on your paint and everything's on the tray ready to go. All right, artists, have an awesome time.